All right. Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Shai. All praises and glories due to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakar Kwadash, for giving us this knowledge, this truth, this wisdom, this understanding, especially in the times we're living in, which indeed is a blessing. So, earlier, I was going to do a a video and the topic was going to be about the new covenant because uh, you had this uh, dude, this upstart and uh, the brother um, Elder Manatazak Bar of uh, GMS South Carolina, he did a video on him you know, some uh, upstart who uh, did a video saying that we're in the new covenant right and you've seen GMS is going off GMS is this GMS is that you know the usual crap that they say about us and then this upstart made a statement he said that um, we're in the new covenant which is uh, which I'll probably still do a video on that uh, which is not the truth we're, we're not we're rehearsing the righteous acts but we're not in the new covenant right now we'll be in the new covenant when Yahweh Shai comes and changes us from this vile flesh because the new covenant consists of us following the law statutes and commandments perfectly okay uh, you can read about the new covenant in the book of Ezekiel uh, the 36th chapter where the Lord said he'll put the laws in our inward parts which means we're going to be perfect that is the new covenant so we're not in the new covenant we're rehearsing this is a rehearsal but to say we're in the new covenant is uh, simply not uh, true because uh, Yahweh Shai has to come and change us we have to be changed even the Apostle Paul said that we have to be changed so I was going to do a video on that subject, bring out some precepts, but then I saw this video here by um, Elder Apostle Ramlab. <laughs> Ye are like unto whited sepulchres, and as you can see, I'm like 29 minutes in, and I'm just going to go back to the beginning of this video uh, and let him introduce uh, the topic of this video, which... I had to write it down, man. Uh, the topic of this video will be um, you don't look pretty when you put your hand to the plow. Okay, I, like I said, I had to write it down so I didn't forget it. You don't look pretty when you put your hand to the plow because being in this ministry, right, we're putting our hand to the plow. This is work. And in most cases, this is hard work. So when you're working hard, you're not looking pretty, man. Okay? And you're going to see why I call it that topic based upon a statement that uh, Bishop Nathaniel made. So without further ado, and uh, Elder Apostle Ramlap covered it in his lesson. So without further ado, let's get into it. Yeah, me for me. There we go. Hashem, Hashem, Welcome to another live lesson. The name of this one is. Just bear with me one second. You are like unto whited sepulchres. And the inspiration for this lesson, pretty much, I was sitting here meditating on lesson to get into and um, I was just going to do a various topics but um, I ran across this picture with uh, Bishop Nathaniel of the IUIC and pretty much the caption says the way you dress determines what God you serve so I, was, I sent it to a couple of brothers so did you catch that the caption uh, from that picture that um, Elder Apostle Ramlab saw 
with uh, Bishop Nathaniel, the caption said, the way you dress uh, proves what God you serve, something like that. The way you dress shows what God you serve. In other words, and Esau got something in the world, dress to impress, dress for success. Well, that's actually the opposite in this, uh, this thing of ours, this ministry, all right? What is supposed to look good is the word, bringing out these scriptures, okay? It's not important whether we look good or whether we look, when I say look good, meaning dress to success. <laughs> That's not important in this ministry. What is important is dressing up the word and making the word look good, bringing out these scriptures, edification, okay? That's the most important thing in this ministry. Anyway, let's listen some more. And uh, immediately what came to mind was this scripture here. You know, you are like a bunch of white sepulchers. You know, because they're trying to say that the way a man dresses, you know, is what determines, you know, what God they're serving. Like if you dress bummy because you don't have the money to dress well, you know, like uh, like Yashawan, you know, back in the days told Elder Apostle Gabor, what camp are you in? Look at you. You all dressing all tacky. You know, and they like dress. Yeah, yeah. He, he did. He did say that. Uh, Yashuan. Uh, he was one of the top men back then uh, from One West. And uh, he uh, he took a look at me and um, I think I wanted to. Uh, uh, at that time, I was homeless and I wanted to. They had Yashuan and his camp they had this room where they kept these oils you know oils and incense and stuff and um, I asked Yashuan if I could sleep in the room you know somewhere to sleep somewhere to rest my head you know and he said no and then he proceeded to look at me he said what camp you in I said I'm in um, Ella Apostol's camp you know well I said in Taha's camp back then he was high priest Taha we now know him as Elder Apostol Taha and and he said, why are you so tacky? Why are you so, I'll never forget it. He said, why are you so tacky? Look at you, why are you so tacky? And I had nothing to say. I had no comeback or nothing, you know. I might have even just put my head down a little bit. But uh, oh, he was rolling with it, man. Why are you so tacky? Why are you so tacky? You know. So, pretty much, Bishop Nathaniel is carrying that attitude that, was predominant at the main school you had to you know you had to dress to impress you know you had to have a million studs and you had to have fringes you know all around the borders of your garments <laughs> you know <laughs> you had to have the uh, 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 metallic studs or all of that man all of that nonsense which I'm not saying fringes is nonsense it's part of the law but they went overboard with it, you know. And majority of them guys, where are they at now? Huh? Where are they? There you go. Like I said, and I'll say it again, what we're supposed to make look good in reality is this word, this knowledge, this truth. That's what we're supposed, that's our job to make this thing attractive. This ministry, this truth, th these words, these scriptures. Okay, it's not about us, man. And when I say it's not about us, meaning, you know, uh, it's not about dressing like a million dollars, so to speak, as you teach the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. It's not about that. All right. Let's listen some more. Dressing fine, you know, is, is a, um, a determination of who you serve. You know, it, it's, it determines, you know, if you're a man of the Lord or not. Well, just bear with me one second. Yeah, so pretty much that was the topic of El Elder Apostle Ramab's video. So what I want to do is now, like I said, I was 29 minutes in and he went into the book of James, which immediately the book of James, the second chapter came to mind. But the point I want to make in, in my video is 
right now we're, we're putting our hand to the plow we're doing work now can you imagine a guy who's um, plowing that guy is going to look he's he's going to have a look of working he's, he's not going to be you don't dress uh, what's the word I'm looking for you don't uh, overly dress when you're when you doing hard work okay you if you're doing hard work then you're gonna wear the clothing that represents the hard work that you're doing okay does that make sense to you brothers well it makes sense to me all right so how wish I liken this ministry to plowing okay um, Luke 9 and 62 uh, it says, and Yahweh said, said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, which is a metaphor for this work, this this ministry, right? No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of the Most High. So the, the key point there is the plow. We are plowing right now. Okay. Now. What I'm going to do is take the word plow, paste it in here, right? Bear with me for a minute. Okay. All right, there you go. Plow, right? Plow. So this is hard work, right? Let's take a look at this guy. Maybe he's going to be dressed like a million million bucks plowing. Look look at how he's dressed. Bear with me for a minute. What the hell is this? Well, you can see it from here. I don't I don't want to See how he's dressed? Okay. Matter of fact, you know what? Let's get some examples. Well, yeah, we're in the images. All right, that's where I want it to be. Look, look at how he's dressed. Don't look like he's dressed like a million dollars to me. Look at this guy. Okay, look at this dude over here. Plain cloven. Yeah, he's wearing plain cloven, right? Look at this guy. He's wearing plain clothing. He's not wearing a a, a million a million dollar suit, <laughs> a Brooks Brothers suit. Okay, complete with. Uh, I'm pretty sure his shoes is not wingtips. All right. <laughs> look at this guy. Look at look at how he's dressed. These men are plowing. And they're wearing the clothing that. Uh illustrates the kind of work that they're doing now if these if these dudes were working in an office a plush office wall-to-wall -wall carpeting air conditioning you know plush desk then they would be dressed different absolutely they wouldn't be dressed like that but they're dressed to represent the work that they're doing you get the you get the picture all right so yeah, look at this guy okay so this thing of ours is likened Yahweh Shai said this, okay? This thing of ours is likened unto a plow. You seen what I did, right? I took the word plow, brought it into Google, and we looked up the word, the definition of the word plow, right? Right here, plow. And then we got some images of a plow at work and the individuals that are work in that plow and look at the way they're dressed they're not dressed to impress okay they're dressed for the work that they are doing that is the point so spiritually all right spiritually uh this thing of ours is likened unto a plow so we're not gonna be overly dressed for the work that we do furthermore uh, even the apostle paul said that he used the same 
analogy that Yahweh Shai used. This is 1 Corinthians 9 and 10. Or save he it altogether for our sakes, for our sakes, no doubt, that it, oh, this is written, that he that ploweth, here we go, he that ploweth should plow in hope, and he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his hope. Right, so what's the point there? He that ploweth should plow in hope. Again, the Apostle Paul uses the analogy of plowing to this thing of ours, this ministry. Now, when you're when you're plowing, you're not going to look your best, as proven by these images. Okay, so hopefully you brothers got the the point of that. Now, um, another point to be made is, and I believe Elder Apostle Ramlab went into the into that point um john the baptist how he how was he dressed and how wish i said john the baptist was one of the greatest prophets but how was he dressed let's read about it as you see here this is from the blue letter right yahweh tribute to john right and uh this is the book of matthew 11 and 7 and as they departed yahweh Shai began to say unto the multitudes concerning john what went ye out into the wilderness to see a reed shaken with a wind right a guy who was unsure of unsure of himself that was not john the baptist john the baptist the way he spoke he spoke with authority just like yahweh Shai spoke with authority okay he knew what he was he knew what he was talking about um the eighth verse but what went ye out for to see a man clothed in soft remnant a man clothed in soft remnant when you're plowing right you're not wearing look at this guy look at how he's dressed when you're plowing you're not wearing soft remnant you're wearing the clothes that is suitable for the work that you're doing like i said if these individuals were working in a plush office right they would be dressed different all right what we're doing is real work hard work hard work <laughs> this song called hard work okay so that you know john was doing that same hard work all right and he was dressed for the hard work that he was doing that's why uh yeah i wish i said that about john but what went ye out for to see a man clothed in soft remnant right <laughs> Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. Guess what? We're not in king's houses right now. We're not kings right now. We're studying to be kings. Yahweh Shai is going to elevate us to be kings. Absolutely. But right now, we're, we're serfs. We're peasants. Right now, we're in captivity. We're in slavery. So you're not going to look your best in slavery, in captivity. Okay? All right? Again, a man clothed in soft remnant. <laughs> Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. And uh, that same group, IUIC, they, they had a video, uh, kings in the building, something like that. Kings in the building. That's the attitude that they have. Well, we're not kings in the building right now. Okay. What we really are is slaves on the plantation. How about that? <laughs> slaves on the plantation until Yahweh Shai liberates us all right uh, let's read on it says Matthew 11 and 9 but what went ye out for to see a prophet yea I say unto you and more than a prophet see so this is a man that didn't wear soft clothing yet Yahweh Shai esteemed him as more than a prophet how about that I guess John the Baptist wasn't dressed for success. Well, that's what Nathaniel said, right? <laughs> the way you dress determines what God you serve. Well, what what God was <laughs> what God was John the Baptist serving? Because he certainly wasn't dressed to impress. He certainly wasn't wearing soft clothing, huh? <laughs> uh, and Yahweh I confirmed it. But what went ye out for to see a prophet? Yea. I say unto you, and more than a prophet, a prophet that didn't wear soft clothing. How about that? 
For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before my face. And he was sent to represent the king of kings and the lord of lords. And he wasn't dressed to impress. John the Baptist. Huh? <laughs> Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verily, verily means truly, I say unto you, among them that are born of women, they have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So the point there is, they have not risen a greater than John the Baptist. A great man, and he didn't wear soft clothing. He didn't dress to impress. Okay, so that's another point that can be made. Now, here's another point that can be made. Furthermore, like I said earlier, we're, we're in captivity. We're in slavery. Okay. We, when we come before Yahweh Shemi we're supposed to come humble. All right. This is the book of Joel, the second chapter, the 12th verse. It says, therefore, well, yeah, 12th verse. Therefore, also now, saith the Lord, turn ye, this is us, turn ye even to me, with all your heart and that's us that's what we have done coming into this ministry we have turned back to Yahweh Shem with all our heart meaning our mind this is all we think about that's what that means all this is all we think about is this knowledge this truth right even to me with all your heart and with fasting do we not do fasting yes we do there's something called the day of atonement what is that consist of a fast right and with weeping and with mourning right so this is what happens when we come into this knowledge this truth and simply when you when you're fasting and you're weeping and you're mourning you're not going to look your best you are not going to look your best you're going to look like you're catching hell and which indeed that's what we're catching hell like i said the main thing we're concerned about making look good is the word the knowledge this truth this ministry these scriptures not ourselves man but these guys at IUIC, they're more concerned with the way they, that's why Elder Apostle Ramlap called his, his lesson, year like, year like unto whited sepulchres. These guys at that group, the IUIC, they're mainly concerned with how they look on the outside rather than the inside. Okay. Now here's the point, 13 verse Joel 2 and 13, and rend your heart, meaning, meaning give our heart to Yahweh Shem Yahushua, meaning our mind, and not your garments. So it ain't about the garments. Furthermore, we're in uh, slavery right now, and um, when you're in slavery, you don't wear the best garments. Okay? Excuse me. Now, in the kingdom of heaven, we're going to wear the best garments. You better believe it. It'll be a time for that. And rend your heart and not your garments. And turn unto the Lord your power, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. So that's the point. Rend your heart and not your garments. Okay? Um, so that's another point that can be made. Now, furthermore, the prophets, they wore rough garments. Now, we know that John the Baptist was a rough man. And the, the prophets, they were known for wearing rough garments. Okay, let's bump this up here. Let's prove that. That's another point that can be made. Zechariah, the uh, 13th chapter. I'm just going to go. I don't want this video to be too long. Zechariah 13 and 3. And it shall come to pass that when any. Now, look at the subject here. False prophets ashamed okay false prophets false prophets ashamed Zechariah 13 and 3 and it shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy then his father and his mother that beget him shall say unto him thou shall not live for thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord and his father and his mother that beget him shall thrust him through when he prophesieth <coughs> Now, let's get to the point here, the fourth verse. And it shall come to pass in that day that the prophets shall be ashamed every one of his vision. Right. So that's that's your, that's your false prophets. 
when he have prophesied now here's the point neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive so the true prophets were known to wear what rough garments and even the false prophets to 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 uh, try to uh, get away with their deception they would wear a rough garment so what's the point the point is that the prophets were known to dress rough they wore rough garments okay that is the point Zechariah the 13th chapter the fourth verse let's read it again and it shall come to pass and and what are we we we're really prophets that's who we how about Shimei Asha is raising see that group IUIC they they well begin with their leader they're not really prophets that's why they 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 uh do not understand the vision of the MOTB okay for you to understand the vision of the MOTB in relation to Revelation 13 16 you would have to be a prophet because that's a vision that a prophet received that prophet was uh, uh, John on the island of Patmos he was a prophet he received that vision so if you can't correctly break that down you ain't no prophet man I'm talking about Revelation 13 16 you got certain Israelites that don't even know what the the mark is okay the MOTB we know what it is anyway um Zechariah 13 and 4 and it shall come to pass and that's just one example among many the MOTB Revelation 13 16 okay and other prophecies that if you're a true prophet you'll be able to break down no problem okay and it shall come to pass in that day that the prophets shall be ashamed every one of his vision that's your false prophets when he have prophesied neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive so the prophets wore the true prophets wore a rough garment and, and so did the false prophets who were trying to pass them up themselves off as prophets they both wore rough garments that's the point and the point is you go back to uh, john the baptist what garment did he wore he wore a rough garment now to further build on that further prove that let's go to the book of revelation the 13th chapter i'm sorry the 11th chapter revelation the 11th chapter and uh we're just going to go to the point revelation 11 and 3 and i will give power unto my two witnesses which represents the the uh the men of the lord you know the, the ones that partake in this ministry the elect if you will i mean it goes deeper but it's really talking about the elect of the nation of israel the lord say you're going to give power unto his two witnesses uh which represents the nation of israel you know the nation was split into two you had the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom so that's the elect men of the lord that are doing this work the lord say you're going to give them power and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days which is a period of time we're still in that period of time right now clothed in sackcloth clothed in sackcloth now sackcloth is a rough garment now if we go down to the word sack sackcloth in the greek there's uh, sackos also in the latin is sackos right let's see what that says let's see if i can play that strong's g 4526 sakos sakos we're going to go right to the point it says a garment of the like material and clinging to the person like a sack which was wont to be worn or drawn over the tunic instead of the cloak or mantle by mourners that's us now wait a minute mourners right did not the lord tell us to turn unto him with mourning yes he did joel 2 and 12 therefore also now saith the lord turn ye even to me with all your heart that's us and with fasting and we do fasting and with weeping and with mourning so the true men of the lord the, the true the true prophets that is there would be what mourners because we, we, we you know we're uh how's that scripture go uh sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof that's us we're sighing and crying mourners if you will for all the abominations that we see in this society and there are many of them man so we're mourners so if you're in the state of mourning you ain't gonna look your best 
okay by mourners penitents that's us we're, we are penitents we we to be a penitent means to feel sorrow for what you've done again you're not going to be looking your best when you're a penitent man let's get that the definition of penitent 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 it says a person who repents their sins or wrongdoings and seeks forgiveness from the heavenly father that's us so when you're in that mi uh, mind state you're not <laughs> you, you come before Yahabashim Yahshai humble man you know you're not wearing your best okay <laughs> these guys do not understand what they're involved in they clearly don't by mourners penitents that's us suppliant 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 means to beg we're begging how about Shem Yashai to come and destroy the society we're begging how about Shem Yashai to protect us guide us let's, re let's read the definition of suppliant suppliant listen to this a person making a humble plea to someone in power or authority so that's us we're, we're making a humble plea to Yahweh Hashem Yashai for deliverance that's our main humble plea right so we're penitents we're suppliants we're mourners according to this definition of the word sakos mourners penitents suppliants and also by those who like the hebrew prophets led an austere life let's look up that word austere we lead an austere life brothers so when you lead an austere life you're not going to be dressed dressing for success <laughs> that's what they teach you in this world you know what nate nathaniel said that's a worldly mentality the way you dress demonstrate what God you serve so it's not about the word right it's not about the scriptures it's about the way you look <laughs> that's why Elder Apostle Ramla made his video you are likened unto whited sepulchres okay bear with me for a minute we're looking up the word austere austere uh, severe or strict in manner added oh wait a minute severe or strict in manner kind of reminds you of john the baptist right attitude or appearance or appearance so we lead an austere life all right let's read some more of living conditions or way of life having no comforts well, we have a few comforts but very little we don't want to be too comfortable in this this ministry in this thing of ours we don't want to be too comfortable because that leads to to uh, destruction spiritually that leads to destruction having no comforts or luxuries we have a few luxuries <laughs> harsh or as ascetic ascetic and i believe the word ascetic means bitter oh look at this having an extremely plain and simple style or appearance Ooh, wow did you catch that now that came from what the scripture um or the definition all right the hebrew prophets that led an austere life now yahweh shai was he was a uh, counted as an austere man let me show you that I told you those guys don't understand what they're in what they're involved in oh. trying to get rid of this okay yeah 
It is right here. Luke 19 and 21. For I fear thee because thou art an austere man. That's our Lord. Our Lord is an austere man. Thou takest up that thou layest not down and reapest that thou didst not sow. And that was said by the unprofitable servant. He, he feared the Lord so he didn't do anything with the, the talents that were given to him. This goes back to the, talent, the parable of the talents. He didn't do anything with the talents that were given to him because he feared the Lord. He knew the Lord was an austere man. Which was the wrong move, by the way. Let's read this, the next verse. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man. Now see how was I saying this? Taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Right? Which belongs to him anyway. So that's why he can do that. That's why he can take what he didn't lay down and reap what he didn't sow. Because it belongs to him anyway. And in, in reality, he did, he did lay it down. Okay? So it belongs to him anyway. But the point is, he's an austere man. Right? So we look at the word austere. We went through the definitions. Down here it says, having an extremely plain and simple style or appearance. Yeah, like those guys that were doing the plow. Wait a minute, let me see if I can bring that picture back. These guys here, because of their work, they have a simple, right? What does it say here? They have a simple, they have a plain and simple style or appearance, unadorned. Why? Because they are doing the plow. And I already proved to you that this thing of ours is likened unto a plow. And when you're plowing, you have a simple... <clears throat> Excuse me. When you're plowing, you have a simple style or appearance. That's why we wear simple garments. Okay? Let's bring back the word austere. Having an extremely plain and simple style or appearance. Unadorned. Unadorned. We're looking up a lot of words today. But that's good. That's a good thing. That's how you learn. Unadorned definition. Unadorned. Excuse me. Not adorned. Plain. Now when you look at these IUIC guys, they, they, they're very adorned. Their garments are anything but plain. But when you look at us, our garments are plain. Why? Because goes back to Revelation 11 and 3. Let's look at that again. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy. We're following prophecy here. We care more about prophecy than, than the way we look. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred. And you notice that camp really don't go into prophecy. I'm talking about how you I see. A thousand two hundred and three, sco and three score days clothed in sackcloth. You look up the word sackcloth from the Greek, the Latin sakos. A garment that uh, one wears that leads an austere life. A simple, plain, unadorned lifestyle. All right, and that's us. And finally, in James, which Elder Apostle Ramla, he went into uh, he went into that scripture. I'll just go for it, through it real quick. James, oh, these guys are uh, I, I see they're guilty of the sin of partiality, and here's the reason why. Uh, James 2 and 1, my brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Yahweh the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there come unto, unto your assembly a man with a gold ring, yeah, dressed, dressed to impress. Can you imagine a man wearing his gold ring out there plowing? <laughs> he might lose the ring, man. A man with a gold ring in goodly apparel, goodly apparel. And there come in also a poor man in vile remnant. 
you know, a bum. That's what I mean. For the years, they've been called us the bum camp, you know, that group. And you have respect to him that where if the gay cloven, meaning the happy cloven, the goodly apparel, as it were, and say unto him, sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. And they were doing that back then. That's why James wrote about it. Are ye not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? And that's these guys, man. To make a statement like that, the way you dress determines what God you serve. That is a judge of, of an evil thought. That's an evil thought that Nathaniel said. Okay? I guess he forgot that the Heavenly Father have chosen the poor. Let's read it, the next verse. Hawk and my beloved brethren have not the Most High chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he have promised to them that love him. So the Heavenly Father have chosen the poor. And if we're the poor, we're not going to dress to dress for success. We're the poor, man. We're the, we're the mourners. We're the penitents. We're the suppliants. We're the poor. And we're going to look the part, man. Okay? All right. So I'm going to end it definitely here. Hopefully you were edified. On to the next one.